We're making beer. We're using filtered water system. You could use regular tap water. You bring along a friend just to make sure that you don't pour water all over the floor. Spigot's off this time. Spigot's off this time. <laughs> We've got our well used kettle and we're just filling it up to right about there. Right about to the top of the letters. And then once we add our grain, it comes up to the rivets. That'll be about six and a half gallons. This is for a five gallon batch of beer. We're fancy people. No, we're not. <laughs> so here's Al carrying the water. You're gonna have to do that again because I didn't I'm get it. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the propane and the burner and uh, a couple of lawn chairs and obviously we're doing this in my garage. What we do is we bring the water up to temperature and the temperature being about 75 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Celsius. After dropping our grain inside, you stir every 15 minutes and let it steep like you're steeping tea, you're steeping the grain. You pull the grain out and then you increase the temperature to a boil. You gotta clean everything and I mean clean. This is a kettle that we're using to do our sparging with later on. The sparge water that we're using, we're using the same water that we're heating up, but so it's filtered. Uh, yeah, we lied. Instead of six and a half gallons, we're actually going seven and a half. The reason on this is uh, we're gonna be taking it back out before we put the grain in. Where is the two row? There you are. Oh, how am I gonna get that out? It's not two row, it's Maris Otter. I forgot we used all the rest of our two row. So here's our grain. We're gonna be using a pan to this. Special roast malt, whatever the hell that is. Half a pound of cararai, half a pound of crystal smalt, 65. Maybe it's 11 pounds. So what you do normally is you get a base grain, like Maris Otter or two row, six row. This together is gonna make something? Yeah, we have no idea what. Perfect. So now that all the parts are clean, you get to see where this thing goes. This little ring is just to help keep the filter bag at the bottom of the colander. It's just to make sure that this the bag doesn't wind up while you're stirring it when it's got all the grain in it. So we're doing 12 pounds total. Keep going. Keep going. Quick explanation. We got our specialty malts at the bottom, stacked Maris on top. This one's just Maris. We're gonna mill this one first, and then mill this one in on top of it. Our next step is having a shot of, uh, and this is uh, Eagle Rare Straight Kentucky Bourbon. Brew day. Brew day to wherever the fuck this is. This is our super high-tech GoPro mounting system that I've used before. So did you clean the serial killer last time? Hell no. Did I? No. Oops. It's a mill and we use it to crack the grain. And we're just cracking it in half, essentially. We're not making flour. If you make flour with your grain, you end up with beer that tastes kind of like soap. Whoop. And it smells, smells good. The smell was horrible. Now you can see the difference between the grain and the milled, the milled grain. grain. We have clumps, we have clumps. Nicely done. Beautiful. The second time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First time was a little bit of a fiasco. And then the next step is having a beer. Big Rig Brewery. It's morning, use chocolate milk. Rich double chocolate milk stout. To brew day. Brew day. We've been drinking. Yeah. Because that's what you do. It's a brew day, here, so you, gotta, you have to imbibe. It's inspiration, right? So it's saying 78. It's a little bit too hot. But our grain's probably cold because it's been sitting on the so, floor in the garage. Yeah, so the grain is cold. I'm thinking we're probably fucking fine. Let's just dump the grain. Dump in the grain. Stir, 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 stir. We were supposed to take water off. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up while you take water off. <laughs> I am taking water off because we forgot to. Oops. And this is going to be used for our sparge later. It's 
stir means get your spoon in there, dig it up from the bottom, swizzle it around, make sure you get all that grain broken up. If you could smell this, you would do like a, oh man, does that it smells smell like great. fresh bread that's a little bit wet. <laughs> This looks a lot better than it was. We were clumping at the beginning. It's always I think clumping. we got all the clumps out. It always clumps at the beginning. Fuck off. Thank you. Stir, 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 stir. Because that's how it looks. And, and damn, does it look good. It's going to be a fantastic beer. I can tell it. Ooh, because yeah. <laughs> we're only going to do a single hop on this beer. Oh shit! While he's stirring, I'm checking out. Oh man. I'm, at this point, I'm almost saying to mix the two, but we're, no, we've said we're going to do a single. We don't have to do a fucking thing. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Fuck it. One ounce of each. Done! The Granville Island Winter Ale. Most winter ales are spicy. This one is sweet. It tastes like a Tootsie Roll. It's dangerous. An ounce of each Kent Golding and an ounce of Fuggle. If you've never smelled hops, they smell a little bit citrusy, tangy. It, it's a flower. It is, it's a beautiful flower. <laughs> this is our last stir. Now we're just increasing temperature until we get back up to our drop-in temp. Nice sterile environment on the trash cans, dropping the grain means that we're taking the grain out of our kettle. Once it's in there, it's going to drain a bit. Everything that comes out of it gets put back in here. We're then going to wash the grain using our sparge water. It's not heavy, is it, Rob? Yeah, a little. <laughs> oh, going, going. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. So Rob's gonna put that lid on, which is a perfect fit just to help keep the heat in and to press it down. What we're doing now is we're washing the grain. We're trying to get all that leftover goodness out of the, the grain. Okay, good, up. Man, that smells good. Two hands. She's starting to roll, right? Here we go, here we go. This is this is called the hot the break. Hops. You're a stir stick, maybe. Look at the hops. Getting close here, but we're fine. See how it's being replaced? Yep, there it goes. See see how the big bubbles get replaced? No, the, the small the, bubbles the, get the replaced. The little by the tiny big thick bubbles get replaced by the big more whiffy bubbles. It'll just roll. And that's right the in. hot break. And that's when you throw in our hops. Just waiting for this patch to get bigger. And then we drop the temp. Yep. That is not a dark, dark beer, but that that's still pretty dark. I, I don't know. That looks like a, a red, maybe? Or a brown? A brown? What, the hell, what are we doing? Is this a brown ale? Maybe. Are, have we made a brown ale? Oh, here we ale? go! If we make a if we make a nut Go. brown by mistake, look at that! That's fucking cool. That was whoa! Boom. It's boiling up.
flame out. We've been boiling for a little bit more than an hour. Look, look at that, that looks color. all in my glasses was steamed up. Going for a walk. Our cooling apparatus, the Infinity Immersion Cooler. You run cold water through the hose, through this, through down into the drain, and it's just going to reduce the temperature as quickly as possible of our wart. My glasses are steamed up. This is the yeast we're using. We're using a, a Nottingham Ale yeast. So what we want is we want this below 25 degrees Celsius. And we're, we're at about 27. So we're almost there. That should be perfect, dude. We are at 24. We're at temp. This is our yeast. Rehydrated, a little bit of wort on it. Ready, aim. As it empties in, it will actually aerate. Look at the suds inside there. Nice aeration. You can see the spigot there. Oh, that's a fucking beautiful yield. Look at that. Look at that right up to the top. Don't drop it. We've got a cork. I can get a shot of this. That we've drilled a hole through and we fitted quarter inch clear tube through. This is the blow off tube that we have put in and it's going into a bottle of water. So the yeast consumes the sugars, makes alcohol, byproduct is carbon dioxide, it's pushed out through here and back into the bottle. So the reason that we have the blow off tube is so that no air can get back in. Yeah, no air can get back in. And as long as this doesn't get plugged and blow off and then paint Rob's ceiling, we should be fine. And the rest of the job is cleaning up. While Rob is doing some of the washing, you can see already that it's starting to condense. And what this is, is all the particulate stuff. This is the little bits of flour, the remainders of the uh, hops, and the yeast all comes down and it'll settle to about this size eventually. If we had a proper filtration system, you wouldn't see something like this, but we don't because we're poor. Brew day, post-mortem. All of this just looks to be fantastic. Looks like it's going to be a very good beer. We'll tell you in seven weeks. Realistically, you can do this on your stove. We also don't have a high-tech setup. There are some people that insist on having a separate mash tun and separate kettle and all copper setup. And you can do this yourself. It's super easy. We talked to the guys up at Toronto Brewing. They are really knowledgeable and super supportive of all of our stupidity. Well, they love our stupidity. They love our stupidity. They love our product that we, we come up with. Yeah, they love the fact that we continue to shop there is what they love. <laughs> That's true. But we love the product that we come up with. This we, is true. And as much as brewing your own beer saves money, I mean, it turns out to be about 20 bucks for all your uh, ingredients per five gallon batch. But it's akin to buying a boat to save on fish. Wow, we're going to edit the shit out of this. Oh yeah, it always gets edited the shit. As you can see, it's 24 hours later. The complex sugars are being turned into alcohol. Carbon dioxide, which is the off product, gets expelled down the tube and it comes down. And you can see why we have a blow off because that's... It is blowing it off. It is blowing. It's an excellent blow off. It's a, it's a, it's a good brew.